And welcome to Good News. So, what's been happening? Is a tip. If you're going to show off behind a reporter, make sure you practice. They all went, yeah, it's cool. So, Archive is cool. We like it. And what a great film that was. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think Kay Burley supporting gay marriage for the wrong reasons. So, let gays marry. Why should they be happy? <laughs> I'll tell you what, don't you just hate it when you're on telly and you've locked yourself out? <laughs> and finally, if you're going to interrupt the news, this is how you do it. The scammers may have taken Yetta Jacobs' life savings and possibly her life. <laughs> so, what's been going on? Well, the secretive Bilderberg group had a meeting. Amidst heavy security, the mysterious Bilderberg Group is meeting. The Bilderberg Group, most powerful people on Earth. Politicians, business chiefs, royalty. are gathering for an annual summit to discuss global policy. Behind closed doors, secretive. Everything is off the off record. Off the record. Total privacy. <gasps> the Bilderberg Group. <laughs> so where did this all-powerful group meet? New York? The Seychelles? Just off an A road in Watford. <laughs> Watford! <laughs> Apparently they've got a TK Maxx. <laughs> they could have gone anywhere and they went to Watford. <laughs> so who are the Bilderberg Group? Well, my favourite conspiracy theorist has a few ideas. Bilderberg Group is a dangerous <laughs> phenomenon. <laughs> phenomenon. <laughs> phenomenon. <laughs> phenomenon. <laughs> phenomenon. Phenomenon. Then why phenomenon? Forget it! <laughs> <laughs> so why is he so upset? Well, he's part of a small minority who claim that the Bilderbergs aren't just world leaders and MPs. Oh, no. They've got a deeper, darker secret. They're all sinister giant lizards engaged in a conspiracy against humanity. <laughs> That's right! Apparently the world is run by giant lizards. We will destroy the world. Oh, look, a fly. <laughs> You show me a politician who looks like a lizard. <laughs> All right, one, but I doubt you find any others. <laughs> In royal news, this week, the Queen went to the BBC. The Queen has spent the morning here at New Broadcasting House in central London to open officially the BBC's new headquarters. It was brilliant. Did you see the moment she photobombed the news? Yes, it's a view that we share with our audience every day, but today, a unique uh, moment with a very special royal guest. How much would you have loved it if you just went...? <laughs> My highlight was the moment she went to Radio 1. Did you see this? Did you see her listening to the script? Pretty catchy, pretty nice. <laughs> I wonder what the Queen thought. They could be heroes. <laughs> Look at that face! Look at that! <laughs> what a load of shit! <laughs> I prefer Will I Am. I can't believe the Queen was watching someone from The Voice and didn't turn her chair around. <laughs> How great would that have been? Not for me. <laughs> Has he gone yet? Kill him! <laughs> Still, I bet she gave them a massive round of applause when they finished. Just for one day. We're lucky we'll get back for cash in the attic. <laughs> Absolute shit. <laughs> now, elsewhere this week, big drama for Simon Cowell. There was added drama and excitement on the live final of Britain's Got Talent tonight. A young woman appeared to get up from the orchestra and pelted the judges, including Simon Cowell, with eggs. <laughs> Nearly hit 
Simon in the face, but luckily his belt protected him. <laughs> so, it's a shame we're talking about eggs. We should be talking about the winners. They're called attraction. Did you see them? They're amazing. <laughs> Incredible, moving images there. Mind you, have you seen their outtakes? They're a bit full on. Come on, come on, you got a heart as now as now as now I cannot wait to see them perform that at the Royal Variety. <laughs> I think we all know the reaction they'll get. <laughs> what else? Well, Simon Cowell wasn't the only celeb who's had a tough week. Did you hear about Talisa? Talisa was arrested two days after this picture was revealed. It allegedly shows her arranging for a friend to supply half an ounce of cocaine to an undercover reporter. To be honest, I felt a bit sorry for her. I mean, we've all been stung. Yeah, mate, I can get you anything you want. You get any meow meow? Big time. <laughs> and if that's not enough for you, I can get you a really filthy party girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna suck you dry! <laughs> Hilarious kid stories in the news. Did you hear about this? There are calls for children as young as five to be taught about pornography. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Countries in recession, millions are unemployed. We need to teach toddlers about rimming. <laughs> How are they going to teach that? Hey, kids! Old MacDonald had a gimp. E I E I. <laughs> oh. Jack and Jill went up the hill to do a bit of snogging. Jill opened her eyes to her surprise. Jack had taken her dogging. <laughs> it's so creepy. Look, kids. Daddy's parking his tractor in Mummy's hairy garage. <laughs> do you have any questions? Yeah! Can I close my fucking eyes? <laughs> Walking around the playground like this. I've seen things, man. <laughs> there were these two girls, this cup. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. Apparently, they're doing it to make sure kids aren't afraid of porn, and you're like, what? Kids aren't afraid of porn. They've got bigger things to worry about, like Hoovers. <laughs> <laughs> about pornography. Some of them are still baffled by food. Did you hear about this? Research by the British Nutrition Foundation suggests that almost a third of primary school children in the UK think that cheese comes from plants. <laughs> while one in five say fish fingers are made out of chicken. <laughs> that must have been such a beautiful moment. What are these fish fingers made from? Chicken. <laughs> All right, let's go again, shall we? All right, Mum, yeah, fine, let's go again. <laughs> Where do blackberries come from? Um, Catherine Warehouse? <laughs> Did you see any of the answers? They're amazing. Where does food come from? Mum. <laughs> what are tomatoes made of? Reindeer noses. <laughs> One kid even thought pasta was a hat. <laughs> Mind you, it is pretty rich of adults to mock kids about food. You know, silly children don't know what they're eating. We've been eating horse lasagna for years. <laughs> Stupid little children. Nom, 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 nom. Why have I grown hooves? <laughs> I kind of feel sorry for the kids. Some reporters were even trying to catch them out live on air. But this little legend was having none of it. Can you tell me what fish fingers are made from? Bread crumbs and fish. <laughs> it's pretty obvious, you dozy tart. <laughs> Wouldn't you have loved it if you went, oh, yeah, one more thing? There you go. 
put breadcrumbs on that. <laughs> Bizarrely, that isn't the craziest story about kids and food. This is the scene of the crime. The woman who lives here called police about her Pop-Tarts. She didn't just call the police. Look what she did next. She had her 13-year-old son jailed for stealing her Pop-Tarts. <laughs> or, as this reporter put it, she fingered her own son. <laughs> Christ, no wonder he nicked her Pop-Tarts. <laughs> He's a strict mum. If I stole food when I was little, I got a telling off. I never got fisted. <laughs> Do you know the weirdest thing? Apparently, the dance troupe attraction have already worked it into their new routine. <laughs> Up. Oh, there's been some cracking stories from Australia in the news. First of all, a beer drinker is being treated like a king after writing a letter to a company complaining about their new low-alcohol brand. Brendan is a big man with a big thirst and a big complaint. His favourite drop has left a bad taste in his mouth. It was a top drink until I changed it. And when I changed it, it tasted like crap. Tasted like a dingo's ball bag. <laughs> So, did he write them a gentle letter critiquing the new taste? Nope. Here's the letter he wrote. I'm not fucking happy with the taste of the new product you're providing. You can shove it up your ass. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'll be drinking fucking lattes on the side of the road. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> the best thing, that letter actually worked. We apologise. We got it wrong. But we've listened to you. And we're now going back to the original full strength, full flavour at 4.9%. Moral of the story, if you're not happy, swear like fun! <laughs> not that it's the craziest letter down under. Check out the fan mail that Paul Henry read out of the Kiwi version of the BAFTAs. This is possibly the greatest exception speech I've ever seen in my life. These are the words of a very, very passionate fan. And, and so you'll have, to, you'll have to read between the lines. Paul Henry, you are the most insulting little self-conceited little mongrel prick on TV. <laughs> I would love Susan Boyle to shit on your ugly face. <laughs> Pamela Anderson to give you AIDS, David Hasselhoff to punch you on the nose, preferably before Susan shits on you. <laughs> and the writer, and I can't credit him or her because they haven't put their name on this letter, ends with the, I think, quite memorable line. You fucking poofter. <laughs> Pommy mongrel prick. <laughs> Die, you <laughs> Now, from anger to loneliness, have a look what this bloke did when his best friend moved away. A Brisbane man has taken to the internet to find a new best mate. But not only that, right? Not only did he go online, he also did an amazing interview on telly explaining the key skills he requires in a best mate. One of your requirements is knowing the peacock dance. What is the peacock yeah. dance? Oh, it's a dance that just confuses women in the club. It sort of just puts them, sedates them. They, they don't know what happened, and then you swoop in and talk to them. <laughs> Pretty sure that's for hypno. So you're probably thinking, I doubt he did the dance on telly. Mm, guess again. The peacock dance goes a little bit like this. Well, he's, he does it like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How is that dance going to impress women? <laughs> Do you feel sedated? <laughs> You're the one who needs sedating. <laughs> the only people that is going to impress are pigeons. <laughs> Just outside. Who's the fucking mover? <laughs> I'll, tell you what. I'll tell you what, Maureen. <laughs> I'd let him give me a liquid ass. <laughs> He might be better off alone. 
Some mates can be real arseholes. You can be looking on Facebook, and from nowhere, someone does this to you. <laughs> that is the cruelest and yet poshest prank ever. <laughs> hey, let's get Joshua in the spots with the champagne cork. <laughs> oh, Bunty, you are the living end. <laughs> Now, while we're here, there might be lonely people in England, not just Australia. If there's anyone out there and you're looking for a new best mate, I've got just the person. <laughs> I'm going to suck you dry. <laughs> This is the part of the show I genuinely don't know anything about. There's going to be a mystery guest who's been in the news and I have to figure out who that person is. So, please welcome my Mr. Gay. <laughs> hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello, madam. What's your name? Christine. Christine. I'm Mike. Hey, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you. So, um... Can I sit down here? Is this allowed? Yes, indeed. I imagine it's got something to do with uh, balloons. Yes. Yeah. And parties. Yes. Um, do you uh, gatecrash kids' parties and steal their goods? Uh, I'd love to. I'd, I'd love, love to do to. that. I would. <laughs> if you could nick anything from a child, what would you nick? Chocolate. Nice. <laughs> you didn't even think for a second yeah. chocolate straight away. <laughs> um, Shall we tell you our names that might... Give you uh, a stage name. I thought you, oh, your stage name. Yes, yeah. yes. Right, OK. And I am Twistina. Twistina. Yes. And you, my friend? Twistiver. Twistiver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, could I join your troop as... Uh, I was going to say Bender then, but that seems very... <laughs> <laughs> you, you I, could, I could be you Bender. Could, I could be Bender. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Twistiver and Bender. <laughs> You're going to have to help me out. Why have, you, why have you been in the news this week? We make balloon models for the rich and famous. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> So, we have something. I don't know. I've got care. something there. Have a rummage. As we said, not just children, we do lots of do's for all age groups, weddings, um, students, university balls, dinners. University balls? Alien hitchhiker. That is an alien hitchhiker, very nice. <laughs> if I was at a student ball and it was about three in the morning and I was pissed and on many, many drugs, that would terrify me. Yeah. <laughs> This is a bow and arrow. This is a fun one. Oh, I see, one. I see, yeah. These oh, are good at three o'clock in the morning when you're on a few beers. But like you said this is a bow and arrow. Yeah. <laughs> but that sounds like a hastily constructed alibi, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a bow and arrow! What are you talking about? I've been dressing up as uh, Goldilocks and trying to shag myself with a bear cock. <laughs> well, put, <laughs> I wonder if you can guess it. Who's that? On it. Who is it? Does anyone, can anyone guess? Yeah. Yeah. It can't be me. The eyes are facing in the right way. <laughs> Why is my hair receding? <laughs> are we, are we going to have any balloon-based fun? Oh, I think we will, Oh, yes. I look forward to yes. that. Great. <laughs> I was born ready to blow blue. Okay. <laughs> right, so what we're going to do is I am going to show you how to make an octopus. <gasps> okay. okay. I'll show you how to use the pump. Hold the nozzle on. Yep. Because if you don't, it'll shoot it'll like go off. I felt like a really, really turned on smell thing. <laughs> Do you want to see an outtake from Shrek? <laughs> oh! <laughs> right, so you want four balloons. Yep. I could have four as well. Now, what you want to do is gather them all up, then give them a twist. 
<laughs> Grab your tentacles and bring them all together. And then you've got to make a sort of a little bubble on the top of all the balloons. That's going to be the head. Yeah, yeah. And twist that around. <laughs> Can you twist it for me? I can, yeah. Squeeze it in. And... Uh, twist! Bit. OK. I feel like one of God's crap helpers. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, check out these octopus bastards! <laughs> Please give it up for Mandy Stringer! Now stop whatever you're doing. Apparently scientists have discovered the reason that some men get more sex than others. If there was ever an excuse <laughs> for getting out of housework, this is it, gentlemen. Research has found that men who do traditional female chores have less sex <laughs> than those who stick to more masculine tasks. <laughs> well, if that's true, this bloke must be beating them off with a shitty stick. <laughs> I tell you what, how picky are women? Why don't you fancy him? Well, he's good looking, he's clever, he's charming, he's kind, but apparently he likes to hoover. <laughs> what a nasty bastard. Why can't I have a normal bloke that slaps me about and puts up a shelf? <laughs> Why can't I have a normal bloke like that? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Let's be honest, this story is bollocks. Mowing the lawn does not make you look sexy. Anything for you, ladies? <laughs> Say, oh my God, watch him mow that goddamn lawn! <laughs> now, staying in the world of love. Oh, did you hear about this? According to a police report, a man and woman were attacked by a man with a large knife at Craighead Forest Park. While the young woman ran off, the man, 26 year old Tyler Siegel, stayed back to fight the attacker. Tyler Siegel, you are a hero. Protecting your date from a near death experience, I take my cap off to you, sir. Turns out, Siegel asked his friend to attack them so he could impress the girl. <laughs> Tyler Siegel, you're a dick! <laughs> Give me back my cap. <laughs> that must have been the most ridiculous mugging ever. Give me all your money, Tyler! <laughs> How'd you know my name? <laughs> I've known you all my life! He's been stalking me forever! <laughs> What's wrong with you, Dave? We fucking rehearsed this. <laughs> If you think faking and mugging is bad, have a look what happened to this bloke in Florida. A man stripped naked to propose to his girlfriend on the porch, but gets tasered after doing it at the wrong house. <laughs> Who answers the door with a taser in their hand? <laughs> Poor sod, will you marry me? <laughs> Apparently, she put so much electricity through him, she gave him a... Liquid ass. <laughs> But what I don't get, and I'm sure you're the same, he loves her enough to strip off, but not enough to know where she lives. <laughs> Surely, the first thing you do if you're going to knock on someone's door naked, check it's the right house. <laughs> Actually, second thing, first thing, just give it a stretch. <laughs> just tease it out, make sure, make sure it's at its fighting weight, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Heavy, not hard. <laughs> This joke's mainly for the fellas. <laughs> I like ladies have that similar thing. Oh, I'm going out with Barry tonight. Just give it a little bit of a wiggle. <laughs> Mind you, I wish I'd seen it. Is there anything greater than the noise someone makes when they're tasered? Taser, taser! <laughs> yeah! Do you know the oddest thing about this story? Apparently, the dance troupe attraction. <laughs> <laughs> They've already worked it into their routine.
now an inspirational story about a woman called Claire Lomas. The London Marathon last year. Claire Lomas completed it in a robotic suit. It took her 17 days. You know, the marathon was a great experience, but you know, we actually had really good fun. The walking was hard and challenging, but the people made it. And you know, when you've got a good group of people and you exercise, and you just feel good for it. Claire was left paralysed from the waist down after a riding accident five years ago. After my accident, you know, I felt like every door had been slammed in my face. And, I certainly did feel at rock bottom and some days I thought I can't, you know, I was always active, I never sat down and suddenly I'm told them, you're going to spend the rest of your life in a wheelchair and I'm like, you know, I don't know if I can live like this. It, it is so much to get your head around. It's a feat of endurance that would get the better of most of us. So for Claire Lomas, the achievement is all the more incredible. Today, she finished a 400-mile charity bike ride. The 33-year-old is raising money for spinal research. She's travelled 400 miles on arm power alone. She started in Nottingham and did the equivalent of around 16 marathons. And she even managed to stop off at schools on the way. She was an extraordinary lady and uh, a true inspiration, I think, um, to all others, or should be. She wants to spread the word that whatever happens to you, there is always hope. I love you, Jeff. Now it's time for my stand up guest, so please give a huge welcome to the wonderful Liam Williams! <laughs> Okay, here's the first joke. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> so, the universe implodes. No matter, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Liam Williams, at your service. It's, um, it's a good joke, it's a bit geeky, that's the only problem. I was always a bit of a geek at school. I used to get bullied for that, but I dealt with it. I always gave as good as I got. In fact, I gave better than I got. Not to the same people, to the smaller boys, the weaker boys. <laughs> and to my family's animals. And that helps. It's nice to be here. My name's Liam. Brown hair, blue eyes, always up for a laugh. I live in uh, North London. I don't really like where I live because I hate my neighbours. My neighbours piss me off all day. Their Wi-Fi connection is so slow. It's just... <laughs> it's unbearable. What a pleasure to be here. How, how did I end up here? How did I end up with my name in lights too many times for no reason? <laughs> how did I, who left school at 16 before going to sick form and university, come to be? <laughs> Standing before you this evening, well, I'll tell you my story. And I'll tell you through the medium of storytelling. Just normal... <laughs> normal stand-up. We... <laughs> We begin in Leeds in 1974, then immediately fast forward 14 years to 1988, the year of my birth. <laughs> my mother is talking to my grandfather, her father and friend. <laughs> Dad, I'm pregnant with the semi-professional comedian Liam Williams. <laughs> oh. Wonderful news. You will, of course, raise him as we raised you, won't you? You mean... Emotionally repressed and in relative poverty. <laughs> I. <laughs> no, Dad. Why not? Well, Dad, there's this alternative lifestyle we've read about. It's called being lower middle class. <laughs> you what? <laughs> what does that mean? <coughs> it means we'll encourage him to eat three or four portions of vegetables a day and strike him biannually at most. <laughs> We really think this is for the best. Please, Dad, say you understand. But Grandad didn't say he understood. He just turned away and muttered something about his hat. <laughs> my hat. <laughs> my parents did give me a good upbringing, but they were the kind of parents who would always remind me I was having a good upbringing. They'd say, Liam, we fed you, we've clothed you, we put a roof over your head. I'd say, well, I am grateful for those things, mother and father, but if you didn't do them, I think you'd have to deal with the police at the door, asking why there's a starving naked boy on the front lawn. <laughs> 
I hated school too. I hated the head teacher, Mr. Dickhead. I can still remember <laughs> Mr. Dickhead. Stand up straight, Liam. Tuck your shirt in. Take that dead bird out your mouth. People think you've no self respect. What do I care? What do I care, I'd say? Don't you know no actually matters? We're all going to be bukkake with sadness when the banks start to collapse anyway. <laughs> it was only 2004 and I was only 16, but I'm very prescient. It's a bit more respect from some of you, I think. I was a little prick, and uh, like most little pricks, I began experimenting with drugs as a superficial act of teenage rebellion. I'm not proud of that. I fear my drug use may have begun to catch up with me now. I get memory loss and flashbacks, sometimes at the same time, which is just normal. <laughs> normal consciousness. I was worried also for a while that I'd begun hearing voices in my head. But then I thought maybe hearing voices in your head is just thinking. <laughs> it's not necessarily. We all have an interior monologue. Our thoughts are made of language. It just depends what that voice in your head is saying. If you walk down a street, a voice in your head says, oh, look at that dead bird. Then you're saying, I think. But if you walk down the street, the voice in your head says, oh, eat that dead bird. And that's the sus... Just keep an eye on the commands you're getting. That's my only advice. Listen, I know it's an unsavory topic for some people. I've taken drugs in the past. I may have taken drugs in the future. I don't know. I haven't been there yet. <laughs> Can't wait to find out. But there are some drugs I've vowed never to touch again. Cocaine, for example. Awful and pretty prevalent in the television and comedy industries. Shrinks the penis to the size of a walnut and inflates the ego to the size of a walnut. <laughs> Considering the human ego is a purely abstract, metaphorical entity, for it to reach walnut size is pretty worrying, I think. <laughs> I worry most of all that drug use has left me permanently depressed, permanently lazy. These are like my main two modes, my main two characteristics as a person. Now, laziness and depression, not an ideal combination of main characteristics. I have considered suicide but only in the same way I've considered going for a jog every day for the last five or six years. <laughs> I'm never going to get round to it. <laughs> I haven't got the get up and go. <laughs> Need to get my shit together. You know that phrase, fashionable phrase, as fashionable as shoulder pads and little illustrations of mustaches. Need to get my shit together. I realize my shit is all asunder. <laughs> I need to stoop down. Gather it up enthusiastically like I'm scrumping fallen apples. Like, ball it up tight and be like, look world, there's my shit. It's together. There are a number of inciting incidents that led me to these realizations and I'll tell you the one of greatest narrative interest. This girl came back to my flat and we made, well, not love, but the requisite levels of mutual trust to concede our bodies to each other and escape our respective states of loneliness for a little while. <laughs> we made sweet that. <laughs> and this, I'm gonna say, this isn't a standard fuck boast nor um, a cliched self-deprecating tale of sexual failure. I'm fine as lovers go. Not fine as in, oh, what a fine lover you are. Fine as in, how was that for you? It's fine. <laughs> It's fine, isn't it? It's all basically fine. I just do it for the post-coital epiphanies, really. That's my... <laughs> That's my thing. I'll be laying a bed, the bedroom bathed in sodium light from the street lamp outside. Not physically, but psychologically alone. <laughs> Empty and still. Until suddenly I'll be like, yeah, I should make my own lemonade. <laughs> Well, I never do. <laughs> anyway, this is one of those ongoing, semi-frequent things that's never going to develop into love because we just don't respect each other enough. You, know, you can be as close with someone as two mammals could ever be. And stuff. I guess we just realised we have roughly the same sexual market value and just embarked on this unrewarding cycle. Which is fine, like, it allows a kind of uh, detached candour which is important to this story. And the other important detail is that she's stylish, this girl, in, in a way that I don't have the critical vocabulary to describe. She looks like a little sailor on this particular occasion. If that gets anything across, that's the best I can do. <laughs> this little sailor has never been to my flat before. And afterwards, she's a bed and looking round the room, I guess just collecting data to take away with her and use to assess the extent to which she's selling herself short in these transactions. <laughs> After about a minute of looking at the room's four walls, she turns to me and goes, hey, how long have you lived here now? I'm like, about two years, two and a half years, why? And she goes, what? Looks like you've been here a week or so. And I say, what do you mean? And she says, well, you've got things here, but there's no design to it. It's like your room doesn't have a personality. 
And as a joke to imply self-assurance, I say, that's because I don't have a personality. <laughs> and the contrived earnestness in her voice when she replies, that's not true, Liam. <laughs> it's made me quite scared. <laughs> so now I want money and things, things on or near me to imply a personality. Because sometimes when I'm talking to people, I'll see them realize that behind the jokes and the attempts at cleverness and that, there's just not really very much there. I want things not as status symbols, but as decoys and distractions so that when I realize it's happening, I can be like, ah, look at my on-trend boat shoes. <laughs> look at my leather-bound iPad case. I'm gonna get an iPad to go in there one of these days. <laughs> Hand me a MasterCard and this month's GQ magazine. And darling, when the bedroom is full of sodium light and the abyss yawns over the trees, do not stare at it, nor at the bare ceiling and presume me bare too. But look instead at this poster of skyscraper builders in the olden days eating their lunch on a beam. <laughs> and my massive iPod dock and my collection of unusual beer bottles from around the world. <laughs> Life in the big city getting me down. The endless grey, the day-to-day, -day, the daily grind. In a city of such apparently infinite variety, the same faces and places reoccur as if your life is just a Vine video, a GIF file endlessly cycling. Catch a glimpse of yourself in the dark tube glass every evening on the way home. You don't notice time ravaging you, but you don't notice the shadow of the sundials slowly crawling round either. That's because there aren't many sundials around anymore, but you're, you're all dying. That's what I'm trying to put across, I think. It's monotonous. Same thing every day. Wake up, have a cup of tea. Go back to bed for a few hours, get up again. <laughs> Have a slow breakfast, another cup of tea. Go on YouTube for about four hours. Try and do some work, give up. Have another cup of tea, go on YouTube again. Have a bath, have another cup of tea. Just basically a life mitigated by endless cups of tea. And then as another evening curls itself around the shard, you go for dinner, go to the cinema with your friends, go for a drink, go for another drink. Go home, watch an episode of The American Office you've illegally downloaded. Watch another episode of The American Office you've illegally downloaded. Get up, do it all again, repeat, ad infinitum. But at the weekend, go to the beautiful coast again. Fucking bullshit. Like, <laughs> fucking Sisyphus, man. You're gonna do whatever you can to inject a bit of fun into it, because even the supposedly funnest things can become ritualistic, like dating. I want to read you this article now, which uh, exemplifies what I mean about injecting fun into life. I'm playing the dating game at the moment. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I thought games were supposed to be fun. Well, sometimes I think I'd rather be playing Jumanji. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, that would be horrid. <laughs> Dating's no picnic either. So I just wanna read this article about alternative dating ideas from a popular London lifestyle listings magazine. Alternative dating ideas for Londoners. It's pretty London-centric, but you'll probably get some of this stuff out in the provinces in a couple of years as well. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna read it. Could you play the, the romantic music, please? Okay. Looking for innovative dating ideas this weekend? Well, you should be, you fucking little rat. <laughs> Everybody your age group and socioeconomic bracket is dating, so you should be too, you waste of sperm. <laughs> Here are our top 10 alternative dating ideas for Londoners. Number one, a salsa class. Learn how to make salsa at one of London's many salsa schools. <laughs> Number two, comedy on a bus. Laughter can be a perfect icebreaker on a first date, but on a bus? This is comedy like you've never experienced it before. Three, pebble washing in the Thames. <laughs> the Thames Museum runs free workshops where every Sunday, budding pebble washers, or Jeffreys as they used to be called for no reason, can take to the horrible riverbank and wash the pebbles in baby oil, which is like sunflower oil, but extracted from babies. <laughs> when the 16-hour session is finished, why not relax by a burning pile of bin bags with a steaming bowl of alive mice? <laughs> Number four, a tour of the tube. We take the tube for granted. We ride it to and from work each day, and when we get home, we cry. But the tube is full of amazing hidden secrets. Did you know some of the stations are very old? <laughs> ride around on the tube together and bring a wry smile to your date's face by showing them the Nemi cartoon in that day's Metro. Number five, 
jazz on a roof. Tapping along to the crazy rhythms of jazz can be the perfect icebreaker on a first date, but on a roof? This is jazz like you've never experienced it before. Six, a Cayley. For a taste of the Celtic, why not pay a Scottish or Irish woman called Cayley to let you have a bite of her body? <laughs> Seven, cocktails in a tree. Zesty fruit and frontal lobe numbing alcohol can be the perfect icebreaker on a first date, but on a tree? <laughs> This is a cocktail experience like you've never had before, nor ever will want to have again. Eight, visit the National Gallery. Nine, karaoke in a bin, blah, blah, blah. 10, a sewer walk. Without permission or supervision, climb into London's sewer system and take a look around. But be warned, you'll die. I hope that was illuminating. I, I should go. I... That's it, thanks. Thanks for having me and uh, have a good have a good night. Thanks. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Liam Williams. Thank you very much for watching the news tonight.